In today's mobile world, the sizes of screens vary considerably. From 2.8 right through to 6.4 inches on smartphones, you can get a device with just about any size screen. Everyone will inevitably have their preferences, so should your preference be a screen of around 5.5 inches, then many would point you in the direction of the Samsung Galaxy Note series. In all honesty, this would be a very valid suggestion. But one issue for some is the cost of these and similar sized devices. Quite often the big screen phones come with high-end features meaning a high-end price tag. The Kazam Trooper X 5.5 could be a possible alternative. It offers the big screen, mid-range specs with what can be considered a low-end price point. I would not normally start a review focusing on price but the Trooper X 5.5 is £150 including VAT. Included in this £150 is a free screen replacement and dual SIM functionality. Form your own opinion, but this is a good start for the 5.5 no matter what your experience is of smartphones. Competition is out there, but the closest competitor is the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. There's approximately £200 between the two at the time of recording. The Note 2 is a single SIM and does not come with a screen replacement included. The Note has a quad-core processor, three times more RAM and internal memory, as well as a higher resolution display. It does too have an 8 megapixel camera compared to the Trooper's 5 megapixel and a 3100 milliamp hour battery compared to the 2500. There is some clear advantage to the Note 2, it is the hands down winner in a spec race and that is without mentioning the software. You can expect faster and more useful updates to the software than you can with the Trooper. The 5.5 will not be for everyone, but if you need something with a big screen simply for completing your reports on for work, or for a navigation solution when out walking, then the Kazam starts to be a compelling option over the more expensive Note. So we know that we will not be blown away if you're used to high-end spec phones, but if you're upgrading or going for your first phone, then there isn't a great deal to dislike. Google Android 4.2 operating system, 1.2 GHz dual-core processor, microSD memory card slot, 4 GB internal storage, 5.5 inch touchscreen with 480 by 854 resolution, 5 megapixel camera, 2500 milliamp hour battery and a 24 month warranty. With the price in mind, any complaints on the spec really lack the support they need. The biggest disappointment here has to be the screen resolution. Whilst HD isn't necessary, a slightly higher resolution will be greatly received. The advantage is, however, battery life is saved as a consequence. Functional is the design language that has been used on all Kazam handsets. They are not the most pretty, sitting next to the sleek, colourful polycarbonate of Nokia devices, and the Kazam is the definite underdog in the beauty pageant. But there is more to it than just design. The main ports, controls and sensors are all located in the normal places. What at first glance looks like a chip in the bottom right corner, exaggerated by the screen protector, is in fact a microphone. Remove the back cover and the battery compartment houses the 2500 mAh battery with a microSD memory card slot followed by two standard size SIM card slots. The phone feels robust in hand, it certainly does not feel flimsy even if it is made of primarily soft touch plastics. The bezel around the screen is a bit bigger than I would like to see, but I've seen worse. A point to note is that included in the box is a flip cover too. This replaces the back cover and offers a cover that protects the screen that can be folded back behind the unit for in-hand use. It's a nice added bonus. Watching your favourite Hollywood blockbuster may not be the experience you'd be hoping for, but you get the big screen experience, just not the depth of colour and motion you'd expect. Compared to many of the higher end phones, the display quality difference is immediately apparent. However, I defy anyone to say that for sending a text message, making a call, navigating and editing a document to justify the need for an HD display. A light and G sensor are built in so manual or automatic control of the screen brightness is an option as is rotating the screen in either portrait or landscape mode. The viewing angles on the screen are not great, as you may have expected, so if there are a few of you huddling around the device to watch something then not all will get the same viewing experience. Pre-installed is a screen protector which helps protect the screen, but it's a little reflective and not too good at dealing with fingerprints. A toughened glass on the phone to make it relatively life-proof, but as stated earlier, crack or damage your screen in the first year of use and get one screen replacement for free. 
Out of the box, Android 4.2.2 is installed on the device. Adaptation of the stock Android is very limited on any Kazam Trooper handset, which is a positive and a negative. On the plus side, you know what you're getting, and it's not laden with memory-hungry additions. On the negative side, some of those software additions can be more useful and make for a more rounded user experience. The main tweaks on the Trooper are the inclusion of a flashlight and a few wallpapers, not to mention the SIM management for the dual SIMs. If you haven't figured out by now, a handset powered by Android gives you all the standard Google services, including the Play Store out of the box. Just input your existing Google account details if you have one, and within minutes you can be up and running. There is a file manager on board which makes accessing content simple, especially for copying and moving files. An FM radio and movie studio enhance the multimedia capabilities on the Move 2. If you're a first time user of Android, you do not get the same level of guidance as you do with the Samsung or Sony phone, but after 10 minutes or so, you should get the feel of how the device works. The Trooper has 4 gig on board, of which approximately 2.5 gig is available to you. More expensive competitors will offer more memory, but you pay the price. If you're not a big app user, then this will be sufficient for storing apps and some content. But for additional content such as music and video, there is the microSD memory card slot to help you out. It almost comes without saying that out of the box, the Trooper is equipped with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and GPS, along with mobile data connectivity, subject to your SIM card and data plan. Setting itself aside from many other similar devices is the dual SIM slots. Dual SIM means that at any one time, two SIM cards can be inserted into the relevant slots and have active connections on the phone. For example, you may have a personal and business SIM card or telephone number. Whereas before you may have had two separate phones, with the Kazam Trooper 5.5, you have just one phone with two SIM cards in it. From the settings, you can choose how the SIM cards are used and managed. There's no DLNA or video out or anything like that here. The audio experience is pretty surprising. I really did not expect it to be as good as it was. The loudspeaker, whilst not the clearest like the HTC One M8, was much clearer and more balanced than I had expected, with the phone able to kick out volumes that measured into the low 90s on the decibel meter. That is impressive. The speaker was better than the Sony E1 I reviewed recently. Whilst the sound distorted slightly at higher volume, some cheaper speakers can sound like they're being stretched and often have a tinny sound. There was little of this here. Call quality was average, no surprises or disappointments here. It appears to be a megapixel race when it comes to cameras, but it's not all about this, it's about the lens and the processing of the image too. The Trooper has an acceptable 5 megapixel camera, but possibly unsurprisingly the images are just okay. They pass the test but the colours and balance are weak and realistically most of the photos will be good enough for social sharing. Jump into the camera app and it's a fairly standard affair. A bit more than basic controls but not the depth of additions seen on Sony or HTC cameras. You will get to grips with the app quickly. There are two main icons, the shutter for the camera and the video camera icon for recording video. Switch between front and rear camera, manage the flash settings, access previous shots, the main settings menu and a few other shortcuts. For those that do not want to stick with the standard auto mode, you can manage exposure, colour effects, scene mode, white balance and more. There is a burst or continuous mode with the option of taking 40 or 99 shots in quick succession. There is less control over the video settings. You can turn the microphone on and off and then control the audio mode. The video quality can be set but there are only four options from low to fine. Running two sims in one phone will draw more power, there's no argument about this. You need not run two sims at a time, or you could run with none if you do not want the phone connectivity. During my time with it I switched sims in and out over a week or so. With relatively light usage I was getting a couple of days out of the phone. Take the sims out completely and this is even better. At 2500mAh it's a good sized battery considering the screen resolution and I think a more demanding user will get a good day out of it, unless you're stretching the phone with navigation and things that will inevitably drain the battery that much further. Of course, so much is determined by your usage. To be safe, a routine daily charge might be worthwhile. I can't help but be positive about the Kazam because it offers so much for the money when you think about the natural competing devices. That said, Samsung and Sony equivalents do offer a lot more added value, it is just whether the £200 additional spend is worth it. 
A few use case scenarios come to mind for me, and if you fit or are closely linked to these, then I do believe that you will bask in the benefits of cost savings. Such examples include a device for an engineer or salesman on the road where they need something functional and affordable, a navigation device when out walking or for in the car. Do consider the Kazam could be replaced twice for the cost of the more expensive counterparts. The Trooper X 5.5 is exceptional value for money for what it offers. It's just a question of whether it offers enough to make it justifiable as an alternative to the heavier publicised devices that everyone knows about.